So, in our textbook, they talk about markup languages, and we need to learn uh, what a markup language is. Uh, so let's start with a basic document. Let's say I've got a collection of books that I want to tell the world about. Um, so I start writing a list of books. I have here a book, I gave it an ID. Um, there's the author, title, genre, price, uh, all the basic stuff you need to know about my book. It looks pretty basic, pretty simple. Uh, and then, um, you know, my list starts to grow a little bit. I start adding more books to this list. This is, um, the problem with this though, is that there's no real structure. There's no semantics to this list that, that you can't look at it and, and sort of know that this is a list of books and that, uh, you know, each book has an author and has a title. Now, of course, you and I know that because we know what books are. We know, you know, we know the relationship of books to each other and to a library and so forth. We know that intuitively, but um, you know, there's certainly data that you can that you might want to show that relationship that not everybody would know that um, in some application, you know, other than a library. So. That's where we move into XML. So the concept of XML is that we um, is that we can show this information and show the relationship uh, with this data. Let me show you an example. So here, I have a catalog. So maybe this is my card catalog of books, and in that catalog, I have a book, and inside that book, I've got an ID, an author, a title, a genre, a price, and a publish date. Uh, so you can see here, this is starting to show us more of the structure of the data, not just a bunch of information, you know, a bunch of data. Now we have information. We, we know that, that we have a book and that that book is inside a catalog. Uh, and I can uh, show the rest of this. So here's the whole, the whole thing. I've got a catalog. Inside that catalog, I've got a bunch of books. I introduced another concept here, which is an attribute. Um, so this book has an attribute, which is the ID number. So why did I use an ID here and, and not just make it an element like I did here? By the way, these are called elements, um, what I'm highlighting here. So catalog is an element. Uh, in HTML, sometimes we call that tags. So you might hear me call it a tag or an element. So I've got my catalog tag and then my book tag. Another rule that you might see here is that every time I uh, I declare an element or I create an element or tag, I have to close it with this little forward slash on here. So I always close it with the forward slash. Very important um, for it to be valid XML markup, you have to close that tag. So why do I have the ID here? Well, I've got a bunch of books that are siblings to each other, so it's helpful to have this attribute to tell us what's different about all of these books. Um, so that tells me that there's an identifier for each one of these books and, and each one of them is a different book. Um, again, this is all just uh, whatever you feel is the best way to express something like a library. I mean, pick anything, a, a classroom. A classroom contains desks and students, and, and those desks might contain things like a chair and, and a keyboard and a mouse and a computer and so forth. Um, so you can show the relationship between, uh, between data with XML and just about anything. It's a very, very open way of encoding some some information. Um, XHTML, on the other hand, is a little more stringent. So in the next video, I'll extend this and talk about what XHTML is as opposed to XML.